So in this video we're going to be calculating distances to planes and we're going to be doing it from points, any point in space to the plane. We're going to be doing it from the origin, a particular point to the plane, but we're also going to be doing it from two parallel planes and finding the shortest distance between those. Now this is what we're looking at. Uh, the shortest distance from a point to a plane is equal to the absolute value of vector pq dot um, the unit vector of the normal. All right, so P is the random point in space that we're trying to find the shortest distance from. Q is any and all points on the plane, okay? It's not a point, it's all the points. So we don't really have a number for what the point Q is. And N is the unit normal vector, the normal vector with length one. Now you can sort of apply that formula, uh, but I really want to show you how this comes about because it's really sneaky use. Of it. So we have a plane in three dimensional space and we have a point here and we want to find the shortest distance from the point to the plane. Now I'm going to create that point Q and that means that I can draw a vector from point P to point Q. But remember point Q is all the points. I can move that point Q around. It's everywhere. All right. Now it should be pretty obvious that the length here is a simple trigonometry problem. If I know the angle between PQ and that other line here, P to this point here, let's just call it like point B, um, I can use trigonometry to find that. So the magnitude of PQ times cos the angle between them. But we've got a problem here, right? Because I don't know what point Q is. Q is any and all points, which means that angle could be any size. So here's where the really sneaky bit of maths comes in. We say, right, I'm going to rewrite that, but this time I'm going to multiply by the number one. But I'm not going to multiply by just the number one. I'm going to multiply by the absolute value of the unit vector n. Now remember, the unit vector n is our uh, normal, which can point directly to point p, um, and then I'm going to multiply that by cos theta. Now, I haven't changed this materially because I'm just multiplying by 1. But absolute value of a vector times the absolute value of another vector times cos the angle between the two vectors is a dot product. So I can now say that this is equal to the dot product between vector pq dot the normal vector here. And that is where my distance formula comes from. I really just need to put absolute value around that because this could spit out a positive or a negative depending on what direction that normal vector is moving in. So here's my question. I'm finding the distance from 1, negative 4, negative 3 to the plane 2x minus 3y plus 6z equals negative 1. From this point to this plane, the shortest distance. Now I already know that my formula is the distance is equal to the absolute value pq dot the unit vector of n. All right, but I don't know what pq is because q is just of uh, a point, but all points. Okay, it's just x, y, z something. Okay, but luckily I know that to find the vector pq, I just do uh, vector oq minus uh, vector op. Now I don't know what vector oq is because q could be anything, but I'll just call it x y z and i know what op is it's just one negative four negative three because that's point p all right so that means that vector q can be written as x minus one i y minus minus four y plus four j and z minus minus three z plus three k so that's my pq so you might be a bit surprised there because um, we don't have an actual PQ. It's all things, but that's fine. All right, so now we're going to sub it into our formula. The absolute value of this dot product, the unit normal vector. Now, the normal vector can be given just as 2, negative 3, plus 6. And then the unit normal vector is dividing it by the magnitude of that. And the magnitude of that is 7. So now we have this dot product, one seventh of this normal vector, which gives us our unit vector here. Now we can simply put that one seventh out the one seventh out the front now, 
and do this times this, this times this, this times this, and then multiply it by 1 7. Now it looks like we're going to a place that's just ending up in mess because x, y, and z are still sitting in there, but let's expand all of that and see how it looks. And I'm not getting any more comfortable here because it's the absolute value of 1 7th and then all of this junk still with x, y's and z's in there. So how am I possibly going to come up with the shortest distance, which should just be a number? The secret is here. 2x, negative 3y, plus 6z. Now, we know that 2x minus 3y plus 6z is equal to 2x minus 3y plus 6z, negative 1. So, we can remove all of these and sub in negative 1. So, I've done it. I've sub negative 1 for 2x minus 3y plus z. You can see my negative 1 is in here, subbing in for this, this, and this. And now, I have my wish. I have just a number, and I can calculate that. Final answer, 3 sevenths. So, the distance from that point to that plane is 3 sevenths. A lot of tricky maths in there. Um, but it's not things that are unusual, not things that we haven't seen before. Now the distance from the origin to the plane, you can kind of, you can do it the same way, but there is something really neat and a shortcut to doing it. And it involves understanding the vector equation of a plane. Now, a dot n is a number, so we can rewrite it as r dot n equals k. So hold that thought for a second and understand that r is all points on the plane. And the thing we're trying to find is the distance from the origin to the plane in the shortest possible distance. Now, that's going to be in the direction of the normal vector with a magnitude of m, where m is the shortest distance. Now, I'll just call that point m for now, uh, and that's the point that's closest to the origin. Now, because I said that vector r is any and all points, that means that it is also exactly this point which means that I can sub in vector om into our equation for r. Now, as previously mentioned, vector om is going to be equal to the distance, which we can call m, times the unit vector n. Now, this lowercase m is not a uh, vector, it's a distance, right? So I can bring that out on the outside, and we get m unit vector n dot n, equals k. Now when you take the dot product of the unit vector and the vector itself, what you get is just the magnitude of the vector. And so now we get this great thing, m equals k over the magnitude of the normal vector. Now if everything I said just didn't make sense at all, the only thing you need to really know is this so a quick example, we've got a vector equation of a plane. Find the distance from the origin to that plane. We can say that the distance is equal to k4 over uh, the magnitude of the normal vector. So root 1 squared plus 1 squared plus 2 squared, which is 4 on root 6. So really straightforward here. So we've done point to a plane. We've done origin to a plane. We've got two different formulas for doing those. What about between two parallel planes? Well, we can be really sneaky about this. Here's two planes. Now, one plane's here like this, and one plane's here like this, just rough. Here's the origin, right? And you already know how to find the distance from the origin to a plane, and the distance from the origin to a plane. And because they're parallel, that means that the distances between the origin and that one, and the origin and that one, they're going to make like 180 degrees with each other. So if I can find that length, and I can find that length, and I can add them together, I'll find the total distance between the planes. Maybe. But maybe the origin's not there. Maybe the origin is actually here. In which case, I'd find that distance, then I'd find that distance, subtract one distance from the other, and that would give me that distance. We'll know once we get started what sort of thing we're in. Maybe the origin's here, or maybe the origin's here. And we'll have to subtract or add depending on what happens next. So if I look at plane 1, its distance from the origin is going to be equal to k on um, the magnitude of the normal vector. So k is 5. The distance would be the square root of 2 squared uh, plus 1 squared plus 2 squared uh, root 9, which is 3. All right, so the distance of 1 to the other is 5 on 3. Now, what about the uh, second one here? Well, it's going to be distance equals k negative 2. 
on uh, duh, duh, duh. it's the same because they're parallel so their normal vectors are going to be the same uh, which is 3 okay so the distance is negative 2 on 3 what that means is that the distances are signed okay so they tell us whether they're on the same side of the origin or on a different side of the origin now what this means is that this one is 5 on 3 like above the origin and this is negative 2 on 3 below the origin uh, compared to how the normal vector is traveling. So it means that the case is this. Okay, and the distance from there to there is 5 on 3, and the distance from there to there is negative 2 on 3, which means that we need to add together the absolute values of those. Don't add together the negative, but add together the absolute value, and we'll find the distance between these two planes. And that gives us uh, 7 on 3. 3 as our final answer. Now, that is a nice, neat way of doing things, and it's relatively straightforward. We just need to remember this formula and apply it twice. Uh, you can do it a separate way. If you forget how to do that and you think back to the beginning of this video, what you can do is just think of a point that lies on this, so 1, 1, and put in a value, and calculate what the value is for z. Find out what that point is, and then once you know that point, just find the distance from that point to that plane. That will give you the same answer as this, and you won't be dealing with this origin stuff. So there's a separate version of how to do this. All right, a lot going on there, but that was calculating distances to planes from points, origins, or between two parallel planes.